stand density. It's a very basic um, characteristic of forests and one that is very helpful for us to think about when we want to compare two different forest types in terms of their structure. It is also a basic characteristic of forests that tells us something about its composition. Now, how does density vary among forests? Well, um, it is simply a measure of the number of stems in, per unit area in any one particular stand. And um, it's, it's just very straightforward. Here we have three lollipop trees, and then we can compare this with another forest that has, um, say, more triangle trees. What we, what we're, I've demonstrated here is simply uh, a forest with higher density versus one with lower density. Density is a helpful measure of many things that may be important to you, including uh, characteristics of competition for light, nutrients, and water, things that can influence the growth and development of timber, and also characteristics of stands that influence the dynamics of, of fire, both its spread and its potential impact. Stand density is not sufficient alone uh, as a metric for describing the differences between stands. Here's an example, a very cartoonish example of this, but um, an example of it nonetheless. Let's say we have a stand where we have three lollipop trees. Now I can compare that to another stand where we have an additional three lollipop trees. But you can see even with this cartoon example, um, each of these trees is very different. The first stand has three very small trees and the second stand has three very large trees. They have the same density, but they have different characteristics of their forest. And we need a way to illustrate that. We need a way, uh, a metric which reflects that. One of the uh, best ways that we can do this is by, uh, is by calculating a metric called basal area. Now, basal area is simply um, the surface area of each tree when we look at it from above. So if you can imagine a two-dimensional plane when looking down at the forest, let's say at about at breast height, about 1.3 meters in diameter, where we would, or 1.3 meters in height where we would measure diameter, you can think about, uh, you could ask how much of that area would be um, occupied by wood. Uh, for each tree, that basal area is, is just that surface area. Now, that might sound kind of like an odd thing, but um, the reason that it's really helpful is because biomass, both of individual trees and of forests overall, scales with this basal area uh, characteristic. Uh, so, if we were to compare this tree up here, or excuse me, this stand up here, we might have three trees, all with very small basal area. So they've got, you know, just three little circles here, whereas this, this stand down here might have three really big, um, three really big circles, three relatively large areas of, uh, that's occupied by, by wood. Um, and so despite these having the same density, now we've got a metric that illustrates the real difference between them. So let's calculate stand density and stand basal area. First off, stand density is, is quite simple. It's simply the number of individual trees or the number of individual stems in a particular plot. So all you need to do is to sum up how many stems or trees you measured in a particular plot. It's important to define what level you want to describe density at. Here in San Luis Obispo and in these Mediterranean forests, we have many multi-stemmed individual trees, and the total density of stems can be helpful for us understanding things like um, forest aspects of forest structure and the behavior of things like fire. So we may want to sum up all the stems in a particular plot. 
So in that case, our estimate of, of, of standard density is just the sum, I'm gonna do den density here, is just the sum of uh, the number of stems uh, per plot. And um, for our class demonstration data set, all of our plots are 1 20th of a hectare. So we need to multiply this by 20 in order to get it into a standard unit. Um, you multiply it by 20 in order to get it into a standard unit of uh, stems per hectare. And we use metric in this class because it's better. Okay, so basal area, um, like I say, it's the surface area of, um, of, the, of all the uh, trees in, in a particular stand. Um, and we can measure the diameter, uh, by measuring the diameter of each tree, we can eventually get to the, uh, an estimate of basal area. Now, how do we, how do we get that? Well, um, we can use the equation for the uh, diameter of a circle, pi r squared, but we typically measure trees uh, based on their diameter. And writing out that whole equation is a little clunky. So here is a, um, a, a little shortcut for you. We can calculate basal area as the sum, excuse me, mistake there, as the sum of this uh, little transformation. Uh, for each tree, you can say dbh, diameter of breast height, square that, and then multiply it by a factor to convert this into meter, uh, uh, excuse me, this is dbh in centimeters, and then we can multiply it by this funny little um, 7854 um, by this number, 0. 0.00007854, to convert each individual uh, diameter into square meters. Once you've done that, this is one of the really helpful things about basal area, is that you can sum it up for the individual plot, and you've got your estimate of basal area for that stand. Of course, if you're doing a 20th of a hectare plot, you need to multiply the, um, the sum here by 20 in order to get that into a sensible unit per hectare. There are um, alternative equations, uh, uh, it's not an alternative equation, it's just an alternative uh, parameter here for doing this in feet per acres. But why would you ever do that when you can do it in metric? 